All right. Now we have entered a new subtopic called the centripetal force in circular motion. Okay, this is the first question. A thousand kilogram car traveling at a constant speed of 15 meter per second enters the circular curve of a flat road with radius 50 meter. Show by calculation whether the car can go round the curve safely when the road is dry and the coefficient of static friction mu s equal to 0 0.6 or when the road is wet with the coefficient of static friction mu s equal to 0 0.3 all right uh, so uh, what's information given we have the mass uh, here he give us the mass uh, constant speed so we have the v uh, it's on the road Radius. So you want to know whether it can go safely or not. If it is dry, wet, this uh, gives you the coefficient of mu s. Okay. So these are the informations. We have uh, we have the mass, velocity, and the radius. Okay. So in chapter six, just like chapter four. We have to first draw the free body diagram uh, to show all the forces acting on the object. So we must first draw the free body diagram. So as you can see here, this is actually the car on the road. Uh, it's making a, a turning, uh, making a turning at the curve. So this is the center of the curve. Maybe this is a U-turn or what? Yeah. Uh, so this is the center of the curve. Is the the car and on the road? Maybe we see the car from behind. Okay, so on the car, it has the weight downward. It has the normal force uh, upward, perpendicular to the surface. Ah, and the friction is towards the center of the circle. Okay, why towards the center of circle? Friction towards the center of circle because he want to prevent the car from going up from the circle because he's making a turn. Yeah, making a turn so the tendency of the car the motion of the car is moving forward moving forward going out from the circle the so friction try to keep it to oppose the motion try to prevent the car from uh, going out of the circle okay so that's why the friction is towards the center of circle all right then um, the centripetal acceleration you know just like chapter four chapter four we have all the forces we, and we also draw the acceleration, isn't it? Acceleration. So this chapter 6 is the same as the chapter 4 forces. We also draw acceleration. Uh, but our acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration. Okay? So it has the resultant force. Uh, it has a resultant force because it has acceleration. Right? So our accelerations is the centripetal acceleration and centripetal acceleration always towards the center of circle okay uh, so our center of circle is at the left hand side so our centripetal accelerations is towards uh, to the left okay we need to draw the acceleration because we need to put the positive or negative sign because uh, we know that if follow acceleration we put positive opposite acceleration we put negative okay so similarly similarly we uh, do the x and y components okay for x component the horizontal component uh, we have centripetal acceleration so it has resultant force uh, so total fx equal to ma but this time our a has ac uh, called the centripetal acceleration so it had x component has resultant force and do you know that this resultant force actually is the centripetal force ah okay uh, mac equal to fc or total fx equal to fc our y component has no acceleration so total fy equal to zero that's it okay now let's build equations um, based on x and y component so in x component uh, what force do we have we only have the uh, static friction uh, okay 
And what is the sign? Uh, follow acceleration. If follow acceleration is positive, opposite acceleration is negative. So our friction is positive. Our friction is positive because follow acceleration. Same direction as acceleration. So static friction is positive. Now equal to MAC. Now uh, we have uh, uh, the formula for AC. The formula for AC is uh, V square over R. Okay? V square over R. Uh, and we already have the... And, okay, and so the centripetal force is also equal to mv squared over r. That's the formula. And we already have all the information needed. Just substitute inside. The mass is 1000 kg. Velocity is 15. And then radius is 50 meter, all in SI unit. So let's calculate what answer we get. Uh, we got. Um, 4,500 Newton. Okay. So what does it mean by this uh, value? This value means 4,500 Newton means this is the friction needed when the car traveling at 50 meters speed. Uh, that means when the car traveling at this speed, velocity equal to 15, yeah, velocity equal to 15, the, the friction the static friction needed for the car to turn safely is at least must be 4,500 Newton. Uh, okay, this is the friction needed for this speed, 15 meter per second. So let's write that down. That is the friction needed. Uh, that is the friction needed, required uh, for, for the car to turn. Uh, maybe I just type there. Okay. Uh, the friction, the friction needed for car to turn safely. Uh, to turn the curve safely. Right. Make it bigger. Yeah. So this is the friction needed for the car to turn safely. And now, uh, also do the Y components. So the Y component, what do we have? We have um, uh, the normal force. Uh, normal force going upward. Uh, we put that as positive. The weight downward negative. So N minus W equal to 0. So N equal to Mg. Uh, that's it. Okay, N equal to Mg. We got the normal force. Now, uh, Let's see the dry road. Yeah, let's see the dry road. The dry road has coefficient of static friction mu s equal to 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Uh, okay. Now, for this dry road, let us find out how much maximum static friction it can provide. Uh, okay. That, that, uh, what is the limiting static friction it can provide? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's calculate. To calculate the limiting static friction, limiting means the maximum. The maximum static friction that the dry road can provide for the car to turn safely, uh, the limiting static friction formula is mu s n. Uh, okay, so we have mu s 0 0.6. The normal force uh, we get from the y component we calculate just now, n equal to mg. Put it inside. Okay, let's put it inside. So mu s is 0 0.6 uh, and then this is mg. Uh, what is the mass? What is the mass? Mass is a thousand, thousand kilogram and then multiply 9.81, the g value. So we got 588, uh, 588, 6 newton. Okay. That means this is the maximum friction the road can provide. So that means is it enough for the friction required? Yes, more than enough. The friction required to turn safely is only 4,500. But the road can provide 5,886 Newton. So it is more than enough. Okay, so we can say 
uh, this um, we can say the limiting static friction is more than the friction needed, uh, which is five eight eight six newton is more than enough, more than the friction required for car to turn safely. So we can say just type there. Uh, the road provides enough friction uh, so the car can turn safely. Uh, okay, make it bigger. All right, so uh, I'll make it bigger now. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Provide enough friction, the car can turn safely because more than four thousand five hundred. Now, how about the wet road? Let's calculate the limiting static friction the road provides. So, uh, the mu s is only zero point three. The normal force is uh, mg just now. Uh, again, the mass only uh, one thousand. Okay, 1000 kilogram. So after we calculate, we got 2943 Newton. So the maximum, maximum friction the road can provide is only 2943. Is it enough? No, the friction required is 4500. But your limiting is only uh, 2900, so not enough. Uh, so the car cannot turn safely, it will skid. So what you can write is. Um, so you can write there the limiting the limiting static friction right the sorry the limiting static friction is less than the friction needed that means uh, 2943 newton less than the friction required 4500 newton um so less than so so the road uh, the road are not provide uh, enough friction so not provide enough friction so the car cannot turn safely uh, will skid will slide across the road okay so let's make the word bigger All right, yeah. So that's a conclusion. Okay. So to know whether can turn or cannot turn, you just check the limiting static friction. So if the limiting static friction is more than the friction required, so has enough friction can turn safely. But if the limiting, uh, like the wet road, the limiting static friction is so small, lesser than the friction required. So not enough friction, the car cannot turn safely and will skid. Alright? So remember to draw the free board diagram for all things to work. Alright? Thank you very much. See you. Bye.